did was I sprayed down Matt's hair with a little bit of water uh, with my spray bottle. And then now I'm going in with Ruzel Grooming Tonic. And the thing I love about this product is I can quickly spray down his hair. He didn't have a lot of product in his hair to begin with. And then I can work the product in, blow dry the hair, and get it to be in a natural fall. The Grooming Tonic has a nice, really light hold, but it does have a little bit of a hold. So it's great for end styling, but it's also great for just controlling the hair, getting it ready for your clipper cutting. So we're going to use a number two guard. Like I said, this cut is not going to be uh, a super fancy men's cut. It's really a textured short men's cut, something that's very salon friendly that a lot of guys are going to ask for. So I want to go over just some quick tips with this and we'll go over some also some tips with uh, cutting the top and creating that texture at the end. So basics with the clipper. What I'm doing is I'm going in and you'll notice that I leaf out or kind of pull the clipper out as I go up around the round of the head. What that's going to do is give me that graduated line. So if you look at the top portion of where that clipper is finishing off, there is a, a weight line happening in the hair. We're actually going to go in. One of the techniques I like to use to get rid of that weight line is scissor over comb. So we're going to do that in a little bit. So I pretty much place the weight line where I want it to fit on his head shape. And then I start and I go through. I get the length that I want. And now I go to a little bit smaller guard. This is the one guard. So we started with the two guard. Now I go to the one. Just drop it down a little bit. I'm trying to keep his hairline nice and natural feeling. So the one guard takes it nice and close so it's not too... Uh, blocky looking or uh, something like that. So we go through, I'm using the one guard, doing that little bit of a fade. Uh, like I said, I'm not, I don't work in a barber shop. Uh, I work in a hair salon. So what we do is I wanted to create a nice clean look. We have done closer fades on Matt in the past, but I just find that uh, lately a lot of the guys that we were doing closer fades on are coming in and wanting their hair to grow a little bit longer. So, um, you know, and that's just what I'm seeing in the salon. So you guys can let me know, is that what you're seeing in the salon as well? Post that below. Um, I'm sure barbershops, you're still doing a lot of the fade work. It's still popular. I'm not saying it's not, but this tends to be uh, a little bit of a transition for uh, guys like Matt that we've been cutting. So scissor over comb work key things I want you to see is that I have a steady blade. That steady blade rests on the bone of the comb. So this is my seven inch Mizutani solid scissor. Uh, I love this scissor for scissor over comb because the handle is nice and small, but the blade is really long. So I get a lot of uh, reach with the blade as I go through uh, and it's got a lot of power to it uh, when I'm working scissor over comb. So I just keep that base steady Work on moving just that one blade, and now we're moving into cutting the neckline. Now, the neckline, this is a trick that I actually saw uh, somebody on, I think it was Maddie Conrad on Instagram, do this live. And so it was something that I kind of made a shift pretty quickly. Uh, so I really liked this technique. And what he did was he outlined where he wanted to cut first and went in with the clipper forward and then scoops up the hair and meets the line with it later on. So what I loved about this is you're not attacking the neck with the blade down, um, but it does allow you to kind of etch out your line first and then go in and cut. So I thought that was a really cool tip. Uh, so shout out to him on that. And, uh, you know, I wanted to add it. I've been using that technique now that I've seen it on a lot of my men's cuts. So I just kind of knock off that corner. I don't want to... Uh, corner it off too much or square it off too much in the back. Like I said, I want to keep it nice and natural. So I didn't really mess too much with his natural hairline, uh, which will give him a nice easy grow out. Also, I'm going to go through and just work the outer edges of the haircut, the perimeter of the haircut, cleaning it up. What I'm really doing is just removing some of those uh, little hairs that grow in, in different places and it makes the, the outline, the perimeter of the haircut look cleaner. Same thing around the ear, just cleaning it up. Like I said, guys, this isn't a super fancy cut, but another thing I want you to notice already right behind the ear right there uh, on Matt's haircut, he's got an end dent in his head, which is right around his occipital bone, which is pretty normal, but you could see that shadowing. We're going to go in with our scissor over comb uh, later on in the cut and actually remove that shadowing, and I'll show you how to do that. So now I section off the top um, right at the parietal ridge, and I just work... Uh, basically partings on each side and now I'm going to blow dry the hair down. What that's going to do is really start to show me because when the hair is wet I see a lot of shadowing so I get a little bit you, you could get confused as you're working through the head so if you blow it dry and you work the hair down you're going to see uh, how natural the hair falls you're going to see the real shadows that are happening and it's just going to give you a better result. 
So now I'm going to start working on that shadowing. This is where his head goes in a little bit. That's something that for me, a clipper, uh, because it's so wide, doesn't capture these shadows as well as scissor over comb. So I go in with the fine teeth of my comb and I work just that steady blade up and I cut through and I, I leaf up as I get to the top. So I kind of pull back a little bit, still keeps that graduation in there. But my goal is to just start working out that heaviness, that shadow that's in there. So we'll finish up a little bit more scissor over comb. Again, kind of the benefits of this, we had the grooming tonic in the hair. So as soon as I start blow drying it, I get a little more control. I use my comb to blow dry and then I get a nice soft feel, nice natural feel to the lay of the hair. Makes it a lot easier to do your fade work or your, your, you know, um, your blending work up the head. So now we're going to work on the calic. This is a really cool tip, I think, here. Uh, a lot of people have challenges with calics. The best thing to do with a calic is to not fight the way that it wants to fall. So what I'm going to do is how Matt's calic kind of spreads out. Uh, what I'm going to do is bring everything straight out from the head. I'm going to work diagonal sections, uh, diagonal partings following the head shape. And that will allow the hair to do what it wants to do naturally. And then I can show him some blow drying techniques later that will kind of help him out with styling it. So you can see I'm working almost like a pie shaped section so, or little triangles so I can work all the way around the head. And then when I get to behind the ear, that's where um, I'll stop my sectioning. So I, I shift around triangle sections all the way to behind the ear and then I work the other side. You can see how nice that falls. Um, you don't get any of the weird calic things happening because we followed the way that the hair wanted to fall in the first place. So same thing, I'm working that diagonal. You'll notice I'm pushing the hair away from me. The reason I'm pushing the hair away is because I'm pushing that new hair into the guideline. We talk about this in pretty much every cut, uh, every video that we do. You never wanna pull your guide to the new hair uh, because th that's pulling the guide out of its position. So it's no longer a guide um, or it becomes shorter than you wanted it to. So just make sure as you're working through the head, that you're always pulling the new the new section to the guide. Now we're gonna go through, I'm gonna call these vertical sections all the way through the top of the head. It's about a half an inch wide. You don't wanna go too far. Uh, we're trying to get a nice consistent feel to the top of Matt's head. I'm gonna follow the head shape all the way down. But then once I get to this fringe area, you're gonna notice that because of his head shape, because the head kind of moves down, it grows, uh, it doesn't grow, but it adds length to the front of the haircut. So even though I'm following the head shape, I'm following the head shape and then the head starts to peel down. So I get more length in the front, which is a way more flattering look uh, than just following the head shape all the way down. So allowing your finger to kind of follow the head shape and then just give it a little over direction right there at the very front will give you a little extra length uh, and complete the style. So another thing you're gonna notice is that we're following the same rule that we followed when we were cutting the calic. Everything, the new partings are coming towards the guideline. We're over directing them towards the guide. The key thing here again is to make sure that you don't take too thick of a guideline or too thick of a section uh, because if you do, you're gonna be over directing the hair way further than you want. Um, what we wanna have is a nice consistent feel so if I pass my fingers over this vertically, I have the same lengths. And if I go through horizontally, we have the same length. We're trying to create a nice consistent round shape on the top of his head, but we are over directing everything up. So it will pass a little bit of weight over to the parietal ridge, which will give it a nice, uh, even, uh, denser look on the very corners of the head, which is, you know, flattering for, for most male head shapes. So you can see that little bit of extra length. This is a different view. I wanted to give you guys two different angles of it. So this is just a different view of what we did as we work on the opposite side. Another thing is we are combing. So you see me pushing away now because I'm pushing that new hair towards the guide. So just staying consistent as I cut the hair is you know, the most important thing in hair cutting. Just keep the same motions. You'll get the same result on both sides. So notice the thickness of the sections. They're not thick at all um, because we don't want all that over direction. So uh, just really stay focused on those little details throughout the cut. 
Another thing, I did switch up my scissors. So this is the Mizutani DB20 scissor. I talk about it in pretty much every haircut. It's my go-to scissor for everything. Um, we used a longer scissor for scissor over comb, but I like a shorter, more powerful scissor for any precision work, cutting lines in the haircut. So I use the Mizutani DB20. You could check out all those scissors on our website, freesaloneducation.com. And don't forget that we do have a 20% off coupon if you put in the code MATBECKVLOG, one word, in the uh, checkout. So now I'm going to go through cross-check everything. You can see it's a nice even line. That's because we didn't do a lot of over-direction. So nice smooth feel to the, to the hair. And then because I added a little extra density to the very front, I go through and I point cut a nice soft point cut just to the ends of the hair to soften it up. So you can see how clean this look is. This isn't, you know, it's nothing fancy, but it's a nice clean cut and it has a lot of purpose to it. Um, everything is nice and smooth. The lines are good. You know, we used a lot of different technique in this and also that cowlick, being able to adjust the cowlick area, I think is going to be a big beneficial thing for you guys. So I always finish the style with a blow dry shampoo mat out, you know, get the loose hairs off of them blow dry the hair for the finish because we did blow dry it for the cutting part but now you're going to see me giving it that extra volume and i'm going to go in with my bricado carve this is a product it's kind of a staple in what i use for texture um, so it's a cream based product doesn't have a strong hold to it so people that like that more natural feel to their hair this is a great product for that uh, so definitely check that product out it's bricado carve um, but you can see Nice texture, style, everything's nice and smooth, clean cut. You can wear this haircut anywhere. It's very versatile. So I uh, hope you guys like the cut. I'm going to finish up my style work a little bit here. Um, we're also going to clean it up with the edger. So we've got our T-trimmer back out, and I'm just going in and just removing a couple loose hairs that I saw uh, right in the front after I styled it. So just always checking those details. I mean, a lot of people can get out a clipper and start trying to cut hair. Um, the biggest thing that separates us as professionals is we focus on every little detail. It's why people shouldn't cut their own hair and we get to go in, we clean it up and we really bring that value into doing a haircut. So, uh, hope you guys like the cut. Let me know what you think in the comments.